Hi, this is Shannon from SAS for Teachers. Today we're going to be talking about, in this video, adding fractions with common denominators. It's really great when we're thinking of this to try to think of what manipulative might work to help you to understand this from your math salad bar. Some students, when you're looking at this problem, it might just, you might kind of think about what you know in whole numbers, and it might seem easy to just go ahead and add across and do 6 plus 4 is 10 and do 8 plus 8 is 16. Your teacher might tell you that's not how we're going to add this. That's not, you're only going to add the numerators, not the denominators. I find oftentimes that students don't understand why they just comply and they only add the numerator and not the denominator. Why do we not add the ace when we're talking about a common denominator? The reason for that is that we oftentimes will end up, this is actually representing a whole piece. The total pieces have eight and we're talking about six of the eight or four of the eight. We're not even talking about one whole piece. So let's try to look at that and see what this even looks like conceptually. I have two red pieces of paper that are gonna represent our whole. And so I'm gonna build on one piece of paper our six eighths. And so I'm gonna kind of put in here our six eighths. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. On this side, I'm going to build the other part that we're looking at, which is four. So I'm gonna have kind of my four filled in. You might think back to what you remember from whole numbers with decomposing numbers um, using DC with adding uh, numbers maybe in a 10 frame. This kind of layout is a little bit similar. And so when we look here at six eighths, six eighths is really close to our full piece of paper. In fact, we only need two more eighths to cover that up, right? To get it to be equal to one whole. So if I thought about what I remember from whole numbers and our character DC, who has a hard hat and a mallet, he sometimes has temper tantrums when numbers aren't friendly. When DC is looking at fractions, he really wants one of these to be eighths, eight eighths. And so what DC is going to do is he's going to kind of smash this four eighths. So he's going to kind of look at this four eighths and say, hey, if I could give two of these eighths over to this six eighths, it would make it a lot easier for me to do that. So we're going to go ahead and decompose the four eighths and we're going to make it two eighths and two eighths. If a student can't see that, you can look over here to see what we're referencing to. We took that four eighth and essentially we split it into a two eighths and a two eighths. When I'm talking about combining this two eighths or composing this two eighths with my six eighths, I've now made what over here? I've now made one whole. I'm left over with two eighths. This I find to be a lot simpler than trying to, even if you did understand going across and knowing that it's 10 eighths, you oftentimes end up with the fraction that's larger than one, and then you have to do another step to get it here. I find that if you use our character DC, especially when you have the common denominators, for students that don't understand this, they always can go and look at it this way. Let's look at another example to see that this would work for students to show it conceptually. We want to introduce this conceptually to you first so that you have a really clear understanding of what's happening when we're adding fractions. Some students might want to go to the mass salad bar to get out these materials to use them each time, but some might not. Let's take a look if we had three fourths, maybe plus two fourths. So I'm going to build this on one side. Our yellow is going to be equal to fourths since that's going to cover my whole. And so over here, I'm going to show that I have three fourths. And over here, I'm going to put that I have two fours. Kids can conceptually see the two fractions that we're adding together. DC is not very happy right now because he wants either this to be completely full or this. There's nothing wrong with which number or which fraction you decide to decompose. So let's do it the opposite way this time and say that DC says, you know, we know this is kind of equal to half. I want the other half. So DC might take that three fourths and kind of smash it and break it and decompose it. He might decompose it into two fourths and one fourth. 
Does two fourths and one fourth still equal three fourths? Yes. Why did he decompose it into one fourth and two fourths? Well, he can see that if he had two more fourths, he could add it together to make the one. Some students might think this is a little bit slower and you might wanna decompose the two fourths into one fourth and one fourth. That's an option here. We're just kind of showing it both ways. So I'm gonna come over here, technically smash and decompose that three fourths, just like it says, into two fourths and one fourth. I'm going to combine my two fourths or compose my two fourths with my other two fourths to get that nice friendly one. So here I have the one whole and I'm left over with that one fourth. When students don't feel like they need the manipulative to do this, they can just use DC strategy to help them. In some ways it eliminates the step of finding the fraction that's an, a fraction larger than one and then de having to decompose it into a mixed number. Um, you can also, if you're needing help with that, if that is the way that you decide to do it, you also can watch our other YouTube video on how to change a fraction larger than one into a mixed number. We hope that you found our video helpful as you start to understand how to add fractions with common denominators. In our next video, we're going to show you how to do a similar conceptual way of thinking with our area model papers, but we're going to be adding fractions with uncommon denominators. We want to first take off of your knowledge of what you understand here before we transfer you into adding fractions with uncommon denominators. If you're new to our area model papers, you can go on our website on SIS for Teachers under our video tutorials and our, our YouTube channel and check out how to set this up in your mass salad bar. You certainly could do this same exercise with pattern blocks, even patty paper, anything that conceptually can help students to understand this con content. Thanks so much for joining us.